All right, let's uh, shift focus now and move on to the big story that we are tracking this evening. What was once called the Garden City of India is now slowly turning into a concrete jungle. Rapid urbanization, unchecked forest exploitation, all of this has led to a depletion in the green cover of Bengaluru. And the chorus is growing to save the last lung of the city, the Banargata National Park, the existence of which has been threatened because of illegal stone quarrying and artificial sand manufacturing. Now, despite a ban, the quarrying activities have been going unchecked. Activists claim that the use of explosives and regular movement of heavy vehicles has caused harm to the natural habitat of animals, also giving rise to a human-animal conflict around the elephant corridor. Now, according to ISC, over 300 cases of encroachment have been uh, on, uh, have uh, come in. Online petitions are also gaining steam and letters have been written to the Union Environment Ministry and the PMO in this regard. But the Forest Department of Karnataka has decided to turn a blind eye. All the illegal things are happening and it is causing a huge uh, damage to the Banargata National Park as an eco-sensitive zone. Uh, we wanted to Ask the state government saying what is they trying to do it? All the like uh, they they are not looking at the ground reality and mines and geology is going con completely wrong on this factor. From 1970 to today, in that region of 260 square kilometer, you know much deciduous forest which was about 50 percent earlier. Today it has become 28 percent. The degradation of forest, even in the national park, is really worrying. We noted that there is a large scale conversion of the forest land is happening in the region. The common lands, which are Gomala, earlier, uh, you know, about 8,900 uh, uh, the hectares of Gomala land in the vicinity of Banagata National Park. Now, today, around 5,600 uh, hectares has been encroached you know, either for stone crushing or for the sand uh, filtering. The Banagata National Park, with the, the ecologically sensitive region, should be conserved on priority. Let us not go by the political criteria to delineate the ecologically sensitive region. Now, the authorities, however, remain in denial, saying that no quarrying activities have been taking place around the forest, but are limited to sand zones. Two things, madam. One is, no stone quarrying is happening within the Banargata National Park, one. Second thing is, in the year 1991, a safe zone of one kilometer was declared, declared around the Banargata National Park. And some quarries are going on based on permission given by the department and the mines and geology department on the safe, near the safe, outside the safe zone. Mm. So these quarries are running. We are verifying the uh, location and the other things. Mm -hmm. If they are found to be violating, we will take very strict action against them. Now, while activists fight for preservation of the city's green lung, Sridhar Pabisati of Nama Bengaluru Foundation says the quarrying activities will cease once the notification is issued. The sad part today is that the draft notification that was put couple of, uh, some time ago has been allowed to lapse. So now there is absolutely no eco-sensitive zone around the Banargata National Park and that is where we are finding so much of intense quarrying happening around Banargata National Park. It is very important that the state government acts immediately and steps in to protect this elephant corridor so that there is, there is no longer any man-animal conflicts that can erupt. Uh, in this in this eco-sensitive zone. All right, joining me at this point is Amita, who has been tracking this. Uh, Amita, take us through first, as far as uh, the Banargata National Park is concerned, uh, how serious is all the quarrying in terms of, and if you can help us understand, what's the kind of impact that it's been ha having on uh, the park itself? Well, a huge environment impact is what we understand, especially from the Indian Institute of Science, uh, which has clearly put out satellite images of the fact that there is illegal stone quarrying uh, and illegal settlements also uh, within the eco-sensitive zone of Panergata National Park. In fact, those satellite images uh, uh, prove that there is illegal uh, stone quarrying happening uh, over the last couple of years, and that situation has only gotten worse. According to the Indian Institute of Science, uh, around 
300 cases of encroachments have also been reported in the Banargata National Park. The biggest worry at this point is the man-animal conflict is uh, what they call it uh, essentially uh, where the elephant corridor uh, is there. Trucks are, pa are passing by at this point in time, which means that uh, the elephants can't use that corridor, which is a big, big problem, which then leads to man-animal conflict. The second point that the Indian Institute of Science is also talking about is the depletion of groundwater, especially in the nearby villages as well. Uh, and the water retention level of the Kaveri Basin is also going down, which could be a great worry uh, for citizens of Bengaluru. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, this is one of the few uh, green lungs that is there uh, in the city of Bengaluru, which citizens are extremely worried will go away, which is why the online petition also talks about the fact that this has to be conserved. Over 12,000 signatures have already been received so far. Right. Uh, now, Amita, there seems to be some difference of opinion as to what constitutes the safe zone as far as uh, Banargata National Park is concerned. Uh, because in 91, from what uh, the forest officers said, we understand that it was uh, one kilometer from the park was considered as safe zone. Well, absolutely, and the forest officials going on talking about how uh, they're following the 1991 plan. After that, several plans, in fact, uh, draft plans of eco-sensitive zones were worked upon. Right now, we understand a draft uh, plan is being worked upon by uh, the forest department. But in the meantime, two things which the forest department is talking about. One, the, uh, they say that the stone quarrying that is taking place is not within that eco-sensitive zone, which the Indian Institute science has busted in the satellite images that has uh, been put out. Second, uh, they also say that the quarrying uh, that is happening is outside that eco-sensitive zone uh, on private land, which means that the mine and uh, geology department is, uh, as far as uh, that department is concerned, they are supposed to look into this matter and that this does not fall under forest departments official, which the Indian Institute of Science, along with a couple of other activists who are fighting uh, for this issue, are saying is complete uh, uh, rubbish, uh, considering the uh, the work that is going on is happening within the eco-sensitive zone, which the forest department and the state government of Karnataka is turning a blind eye to, which is why currently a lot of activists uh, have uh, approached the PMO. They've also approached uh, the Environment Ministry uh, at the center, hoping that the central government now will take this into cognizance because the state government of Karnataka seems to be turning a blind eye. Right. And as far as the encroachments are concerned, uh, we've, uh, we've been uh, looking at 300 odd encroachment uh, complaints which have been filed. Uh, what happens to that? What is the process for ensuring that, that there is no encroachment now? Well, a couple of departments, like I mentioned, whether it is the geology department or the forest department, when it comes to the quarrying, if at all, proved to be un within the eco-sensitive zone. Uh, and the civic body will have to look into this matter. Uh, but like the Indian Institute of Science has pointed out, over 300 encroachments uh, reportedly uh, you know, inside uh, the Banargata National Park, several settlements also, they, uh, they said, uh, is actually depleting the forest cover, thick, dense forest cover uh, which was 50% before is now reduced to just about 28.5% and that is going to go on decreasing according to the Indian Institute of Science if this matter is not taken into cognizance at the soonest. But uh, the uh, department also talks about how they've written to the state government of Karnataka uh, while the Karnataka government is refuting all charges saying that this is within the buffer zone which is one kilometer which is according to the 1991 plan. Uh, activists are refusing to believe that putting out satellite images uh, to the benefit of the government. Right. Uh, so, Amita, finally now, what happens going forward? Because there obviously seems to be this uh, difference of opinion uh, between what the government is saying and what activists and experts are really talking as far as uh, the Banargata National Park is concerned. So, what happens now with regard to the draft notification also that is being uh, filed? 
Well, two things, uh, Avni, at this point that we must watch out for. One uh, is the fact that the activists here uh, have approached the central government hoping for some resolve uh, here, considering this has been going on for a couple of years now. They say this illegal quarrying has, in fact, reduced the forest, uh, uh, you know, a thick forest cover to 28.5%, and that could even decrease. So they've now approached the central government, so we're hoping for some sort of response from the central government. That's one. Second, uh, there is a draft plan that uh, uh, about this, uh, you know, eco-sensitive zone uh, that uh, the, uh, the department is currently working on. That should prove some clarity because currently what's being followed is a 1991 plan of a one kilometer radius is what the forest department says, which is quite absurd uh, considering the amount of encroachment and legal quarrying is all happening within Banergata National Park and one department to the other, uh, the blame game has only uh, continued. So these are the two things that we have to watch out for. All right. Uh, thanks, Amita, for getting us that uh, comprehensive perspective as far as what's happening uh, in Benargata National Park is concerned. Uh, let's get in a, a caller at this time. Uh, Purushottam Bimani from Vellore is calling us. Hi, Purushottam. Thank you for calling us. Uh, go ahead. What would you like to say? Hello. 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 Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Hello. Mr. Purushottam, we can hear you. Hello. Hello. Uh, all right, all right. I think uh, we uh, there seems to be some problem in that line. We will try reconnecting with him. But the main issue here is the illegal quarrying that is happening, the difference of opinion between what the experts and the environmentalists say and what the government is saying, talking about uh, the extent of the safe zone. The 300 encroachments, this blatant flouting of rules that is happening as far as the park itself is concerned. Uh, the, 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 the quarrying that is ongoing at this point is in the buffer zone around the park and uh, there's high decibel blasting that seems to have also damaged the ecology. Uh, and of course, the state government has not been saying much uh, as far as this is concerned. Uh, there's also the elephant corridor, which is again a very crucial part of the park that is being disturbed by all the vehicle movement. Now, like you heard, the forest department saying that uh, all these activities are taking place in the safe zone around the park and uh, there's no NOC that has been issued uh, for, uh, uh, for quarrying and mining in the buffer zone. Uh, so those, that, that is the real issue at this point, but uh, environmentalists and experts are pointing out that this, in fact, is the last green lung as far as Bengaluru is concerned and there really needs to be a much intensive effort to try and uh, ensure that it doesn't get entirely destroyed. It is already moving towards uh, looking like a concrete jungle rather than a national park because there's acres of this park that is being encroached uh, upon. Uh, this, uh, and, uh, the Banagata National Park, in fact, is a crucial watershed for several streams as well. It has the elephant corridor. Uh, it, is, uh, it was a huge green forest uh, that uh, was one of the best areas in Bengaluru. But now with all of this, with all the encroachments, the uh, government also seems to be turning a blind eye uh, towards this entire issue. And experts are warning that if something is not done, this entire park could turn into a concrete jungle. The chorus, of course, growing louder for uh, all right, we've got uh, Purushottam uh, again on the phone line with us. Go ahead, Mr. Purushottam, what would you like to say? All right, all right. We will uh, try and also get in some, uh, some views from some of the environmentalists to actually understand uh, what could be the long-term implications of this if this entire issue is really not taken care of, the illegal quarrying uh, that is going on, there's the high decibel blasting, there's a lot of tra uh, vehicle movement also, all of it disturbing the natural ecology uh, of the park, which is, of course, a highly sensitive uh, zone. There have been a lot of complaints uh, that have been sent, uh, online petitions as well, um, uh, sent to the, both the Prime Minister's office as well as... Um, uh, the Environment Ministry. 
All right, shifting focus now. Maharashtra Industries Minister has rekindled the quota debate. In an exclusive conversation with Mirror Now, he claimed that industries will now have to give 80% jobs to locals or individuals who have lived for 15 years in the state. He quoted the jobs policy mooted by the Congress NCP government, saying it will now be implemented and companies who do not comply will be penalized. But when Mirror Now examined the 2008 general resolution, we discovered that the terms stated by the minister were not mentioned in the policy document. In fact, it says very clearly that the rule only applies to industries affiliated to the government and there is no penalty clause for non-compliance. Listen in to what the state uh, industries minister Subhash Desai had to say about the policy thrust. Particular companies or uh, particular regional uh, area companies, they have violated. They have not maintained this ratio, providing jobs to the local and uh, therefore we have now decided to observe the act and uh, we have to insist and monitor the companies should follow this act and they should implement it. Now um, we have also another uh, um, device with us that is there is agreement between corporates or between investors or companies who set up their units in Maharashtra while getting the land there is an agreement. Uh, MIDC, Maharashtra Industrial Development Corporation, where allotting land, and they uh, sign an agreement uh, between the MIDC and the investor. So there is a clause that you shall provide 80% jobs to the local. And if not, then there, there will be certainly some action. So far, this aspect was not monitored or neglected. I must say. But now we have decided to monitor it. If they don't follow uh, your dictate, uh, what, what the government is going to do? And we have one device. All these companies, after investing in state, they are given incentives. Mm -hmm. They get back their investment by way of uh, GST refund. Earlier it was VAT refund, now it is GST refund. Every year, they claim whatever GST was uh, deposited with the government, they claim that that must, amount must be refunded to them at the end of the year. Now we shall use this as a tool. Unless, if you have violated this uh, condition, uh, this payment will not be released. So naturally the investor, investor or the company owner would not like to keep that money idle with the government they would always like to utilize that money for their turnover. On that note, that's a wrap on this edition of Big Story. Thanks for watching.